as amended passed. Member's motion with no legislative effect. Mr. Jai Hock Fong will move a motion on relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme for public rental housing unit. Three members will move amendments to the motion. This council will proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the amendment. Later, I'll first call upon Mr. Chang Hock Fong to speak and move the motion. Then I'll call upon Mr. Dennis Leung, Mr. Ch Ms. Chen Yut Ming, and Mr. Le Meng Kwong to speak in sequence, but they may not move the amendments at this stage. The joint the debate now begins. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Mr. Chang Hock Fung to speak and move the motion. President, the DAB has all along pushed for policies to encourage people to move up the property ladder. The tenants purchase scheme was to allow the grassroots families to go up the property ladder. The scheme was terminated because of certain reasons. However, all along, we can feel that there are strong wishes from the PRH tenants to relaunch the tenants purchase scheme. The DAB conducted a survey recently. The results were surprising. Within a week, a, among 11 districts in over 40 housing estates, we got over 3,600 questionnaires back, and over 90% of the respondents supported the relaunching of tenants purchase scheme. About 80% of the respondents said they will buy back the units that they're living in. This shows that PRH tenants would like to improve their living environment. This is one of the reasons why we moved this motion today. Apart from responding to PRH tenants' needs, we also need to unleash land. Why should we relaunch the TPS now? Well, TPS is also one of the subsidized housing schemes, and the price is far um, lower than GH GSH scheme or HOS units. However, we should not underestimate the revenue generated by PRH uh, units. If we sell, Units from 20 to 30 year old housing estates, we can, based on the affordability of tenants, to set the price that is about 20% uh, of the market price. 70% of the units were sold under TPS. We believe that about 60,600 units would be sold if. Each unit is sold at the price of $800,000. It would bring about $130 billion of revenue. If it is launched for 10 years every year, it will bring about $13 billion of cash flow. And this will help address the fiscal deficit. Of course, you may wonder or think that PRX should address housing needs of grassroots families. It should not help people to get wealthy. Some may think that PRH units should not be sold because it may cause speculation. Some will earn a lot from the speculation. Let's think about this. Our housing policy, apart from addressing the housing needs of our people, we should also build a complete property ladder for our people so that people, no matter where their starting points are, they can fulfill their home ownership Target. We can also allow PRH tenants to first rent the units and then buy the units. Wouldn't be wouldn't it be great? Well, DAB pushes for a tenant purchase scheme 2.0. The mechanism that we propose will prevent speculations. Speculations usually happen in the secondary market. This is because the buyer will not have to pay the premium, premium and they can earn the maximum um, value. So the housing authority can set a price ceiling for the secondary market to prevent speculation. In the open market, that is in cases where people have to pay a premium to the housing authority, they should go to 
the account of the housing authority. After deducting the premium, the buyer will only get the increased value of the price. This is same as other subsidized housing schemes. If people aren't allowed to buy their um, rental units, why should we have uh, rolled out the HOS scheme for 40 years? The government tried to reallocate um, housing units to narrow the uh, wealth gap. However, we are seeing an uneven distribution of resources now. How can we make good use of our policies? TPS allows tenants to rent public housing units at an affordable price. So this is a strong policy tool that we can make use of to allow tenants to accumulate wealth. This will allow people to move up the social ladder. Over the years, the government is unwilling to relaunch the TPS because it may affect the register. It was launched in 1998 and terminated in 2005. Over the years, 140,000 units were sold, meaning 20,000 units per year. But it did not affect the waiting time for public rental housing. Reasons being that recovered units are not the um, Units mainly used for allocating to applicants. Mainly 80,000 to 10,000 units were allocated, accounting for 1.1% of all public rental units. So only about 100 recovered units were affected. So there is little impact on the register of um, the waiting list. We have to look at the um, newly built housing units. If the TPS 2.0 can be launched, there will be less demand for GSH. Then some of the units can be rented out and this will shorten the waiting time for PRH applicants. Another question that we have to look at is management issue. There will be mixed tenure. There will be owners as well as tenants. So it will cause management issues. There is also the point system. That is the marking scheme. Lots of management issues arose because the housing authority turned a blind eye to the management issues. Take the marking scheme as an example. While PRH housing estates cannot be managed by the housing authority, but there are tenancy agreements signed between tenants and the housing authority. If the housing authority can stick to the rules and expand the marking scheme, this will help solve the issue. As to water leakage problems, for example, in all the sales and purchase agreements, well, it says that the housing authority can inspect the units. The housing authority may add more power by adding certain clauses to agreement. For instance, it can authorize experts to inspect the unit to ensure the building safety. This shows that there are lots of things that housing authority can do. It's just that it is not um, utilizing its power. I think now it is the prime time for us to relaunch tenants purchase scheme. This is to help people get on the property ladder and we are getting enough support from the community. I hope all members of this council will support this uh, proposal. Thank you. I now call upon Mr. Chen Fong to move the motion. Presence, I move the motion. I now propose the question to you that Mr. Chen Fong's motion be passed. Mr. Dennis Leung. Presidents, I declare interest. My family members have a TPS unit for two years' time. As a non-occupant, I manage the TPS unit. Now, I thank Mr. Chen Fung for moving this motion. Now, there are two questions. Why would sitting tenants want to buy their house? Second, the tenant purchase scheme was the problem with the scheme. In the Chinese society, 
ownership. Is the most important thing, I grew up in PRH estate. It is really important for the grassroots people. For a family of four, with the children being three or four, if they can get a PRH unit, this is the beginning of a dream. But when they but when the children uh, grow up and get their own income, it would become a nightmare. Now they would exceed the household assets limits easily. Now they are not they are not rich, but they became well loved tenants because of the inflation. Now when the inflation rate is raging and income can't catch up, people live in a small place in the private sector, they would easily turn to the PRH market and the waiting time would be extended to eight years. Now in the private housing estates, um, they have to pay expensive management fee. But for those living in PRH, they can't afford to pay the management fee. That's why some chose to sell their housing. Now the pricing was $100,000 to $150,000. Now, if TPS is if TPS um, owners are required to refer to PRH because they 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 can't afford the um, the the month the um, the price, it would be normal. It would prevent arbitrage. However, um, TPS is not effective in helping the grassroots. So I support the idea of houses are for living in, not for speculation. Now for those who can't afford the mortgage, and they, they have to uh, reassign the units back to the, ho the housing authority to avoid the situation of arbitrage. Now the owners don't have the expertise to manage the housing estates, and also maintenance cost is exorbitant, especially for housing estates next to slopes. But there are really a lot of sitting tenants who would like to buy their houses. But if one doesn't have personal experience from um, the plights brought about by speculation, um, that just won't work. Now the grassroots owners are do not have the expertise and knowledge to manage the housing estates. As a result, they were scammed by unscrupulous uh, property management uh, companies and there were a uh, price rigging. Now to avoid uh, being scammed, owners of TPS uh, units stay clear of maintaining the housing estates. As a result, the housing estates become dilapidated. Now the turnover is the turnover rate is high. And also because of the mix ownership, there are lots of issues. Residents don't participate in making decisions in the owner's corporation. Now for, for the grassroots, they should be assigned a PRH unit. For those families with grown up children, they should give they should be given more help to move move up the housing ladder. And there and there should be a transitional housing scheme to help those in the middle. The private sector should be the ultimate goal. Now there must be flexible policies to address the gaps and also um, people must be provided with upward mobility in the housing ladder. I so submit. Mr. Chen Yuming. Thank you, President. I speak in support of Mr. Chen Hofeng's motion on relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme for PRH units as well as the amendment. Now the Housing Society uh, launched the T launched the TPS scheme in 1998 to allow sitting tenants purchase their flags at a reasonable price. Now the policy intent was to encourage home ownership. It was a good policy. However, because of the weak response, the government reverted the policy and stopped the TPS and only provide um, HOS and GSH. Now for the PRH housing policy, we need flexibility to cope with the changes in time. According to the budget, because of the complicated geopolitical tension, we need to 
bolster our recovery uh, trend. We also have the Northern Metropolis uh, scheme uh, down the road. Fiscal reserve is going to um, to run dry, and we need to consider all these factors. Now to ensure uh, considering uh, the TPS, if the governments can relaunch the TPS to create a new revenue stream um, for the public cover, it would be a win-win situation. First of all, we can enhance the fiscal position of the HA. According to the statistics and the estimates issued by HA uh, in January this month, uh, this year, in year 2024 to 27, there will be deficits. In 2024, um, the deficits of seven, one point, uh, the $1.17 billion will grow to $4.28 billion. Now, the cost of Building accounts for 90% of the HA's expenditure. Now, in 2027, there will be 110,000 units built by the HA, but that is just one third of the target. In the future, construction costs may go up. The price of building PRH units will also go up. It will also, it will exacerbate the fiscal position of the HA, and then taxpayers will have to. Pay up. Now the HA is an independently, it's an independent, it's a financially independent public body. Now we should brainstorm to create more revenue streams for the HA under this difficult position. Relaunching the TPS may be a good idea. It can alleviate the financial pressure on the HA and provide more flexibility for the HA and achieve the housing supply targets in the budget. Second, we need to enhance liquidity of government access. As of 2022 and 2023, 193 PRH estates were built. There are some 180,000 units together with car parks. Now, the um, cost amounts to some $250 billion. At difficult times, the government can sell uh, the PRH units um, at semi or full market price so as to replenish the public coffer. And the revenue can be clawed back by the government. This can enhance the government's fiscal liquidity. Now, together with the government's policies, the money can be invested in those areas. Three, we can benefit the grassroots people. Now, there are the uh, Tenancy, the residence um, makeup of PRH estates is mixed. There are grassroots people, but there are also well off tenants. The turnover of PRH units is low. Even when the households become rich, they are also they are still reluctant to give back their housing units. Now we should assign PRH units as a priority to the grassroots people who, who are not yet homeowners, and then they can move up the ladder. Now, there are also other issues, for example, housing uh, estate management issues owing to a mixed ownership. We should learn a lesson from the past. Thank you. Mr. Scott Lang. Thank you, Deputy President. In 1997, the Housing Society launched the Tenant Purchase Scheme. There, are, there were 39 housing estates with some 180,000 PRH units for sale. Now, the price has considered the rehousing uh, cost, so the discount was great. And there were also other special credits. So the price was low, and also sitting tenants didn't have to move. That's why the TPS was well received by sitting tenants in PRH estates. As said, March 2023, 88% of the units were sold. Now, in 2002, because of the plunge in property prices in the private markets, um, there were a series of demand side management measures, and the TPS was cancelled. Now, there are a lot of calls for relaunching the scheme. In 2019, uh, Ms. Carrie Lam, the then uh, chief executive, respond that responded in council that, in principle, she did not oppose to relaunching TPS. 
at the time, public housing unit supply was was in serious shortage. So she would only invite the housing society to consider it again when there is a stable supply. Now, so we understand that this is the premise. We need to we need we can study the uh, relaunching of TPS when housing supply is stabilized. Now, I support the original motion. The, the government should study relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme for PRH units. In my amendments, I also add when we should do this. Now, when the progress reports of um, the long-term housing strategy was uh, published last year, now the 10-year housing supply between 2033 and 34 will be uh, some 300,000 300, units. Now, the government has indicated that sufficient land was identified to provide some 410,000 units in the coming 10 years, exceeding the targets by 100,000 units. Now, the, it is um, it is more a front, it is more end loaded, but I believe that the supply will come along. I believe that the government can achieve the target to shorten the waiting time to 4.5 years by year 2026 and 27. Now, this is this echo the promise made by the previous term of the government that it is the time to relaunch the study on TPS so that we can make sure that TPS can be launched towards the second half of the 10-year period. Now, I've talked about timing. Now, I move on to enhancement. TPS offered house ownership to sitting tenants. However, because of the mixed tenancy. There are lots of issues in terms of maintenance and repair. This is one of the government's major concerns. Now, this time of the government has also debated on a motion concerning the responsibility of managing TPS estates. Now, if we are to relaunch TPS, we need to clarify the responsibility of management. Should the owners establish owners' corporation and take up the management's responsibility? Or well, as the major, as the largest owner of TPS, can the housing society or housing, of, uh, housing authority take up the burden? And also, will there be a rehousing policy for those sitting tenants who are not going to buy the house to rehouse them to other PRH estates and free up more units for sale? Now, these are possible options. In the future, there will be a large number of public housing units built, and with the rising cost, it poses tremendous challenges to the fiscal positions of HA. Relaunching the TPS can enhance the revenue of the HA and reduce the management cost borne by the HA. This can support the HA in performing its mission that is to build affordable housing for the people. Now we have to enhance the housing ladder so that the 800,000 PRH tenants or public housing or those who live in public housing can choose to move to other housing like GSH or HOS. I so submit I hope members will support the motion and my amendments. Thank you. For Secretary for Housing. President I thank Mr. Chen Hock Fong for his motion, which is mainly about relaunching and enhancing the Tenants Purchase Scheme, or TPS. I now explain the government's position on exploring the relaunch of the TPS and the justifications. I will also give a reply after listening to members' speeches. The Hong Kong Housing Authority launched the TPS in early 1998 for tenants of public housing estates to buy the units they lived in at very affordable prices. Then in 2002, the government reviewed its housing policy in full. The HA later decided to stop rolling out further TPS flats after launching TPS Phase 6B in August 2005. Current tenants of the 39 TPS housing estate still have the option to buy the flat they are renting. 
as at the end of December 2023, of the 184,400 TPS flats, 153,000 or 83 percent had been sold. In other words, for the remaining 34,000 or so tenants, they can contact us anytime if they wish to buy the flats they currently occupy. There are suggestions for the HA to explore relaunching the TPS to increase the HA's revenue. This can help meet the huge expenses in future building projects. Let me point out that the TPS mainly targets tenants of public rental housing to nudge them into buying the flats they are renting. Experience shows the price has to be very attractive before those tenants will take up the offer. But then offering very large discounts would, on the face of it, generate cash flow for the HA, or so it seems. But then in reality, this would require the HA to sell the flats at way below the market price. In addition, we would also have to put money into renovation before putting up those units for sale. Adherence to the original target of shortening the waiting time for PRH flats will require building new public housing units to replace the TPS flats to be sold. This would be in effect old flats for new ones. This option would do nothing to boost the HA's revenue and instead put the HA under even greater financial strain. This clearly runs counter to our goal of helping grassrooters with the greatest need by making you good use of public resources. PRH flats, once sold, will become buyers' inheritable assets. The HA will have no way of taking back those flats for reallocation. The current shortage of PRH flats means an, an ordinary family still has to wait an, on average 5.8 years for a unit, unless we can provide public flats quickly to make up for those sold. Relaunching the TPS will inevitably mean longer waiting time for public housing. Over the past five years, new PRH flats and recovered flats each made up half the total units for allocation to PRH applicants and other categories of persons. On average, there were 9,000 recovered flats for allocation each year. If those 39 TPS estates were still owned by the HA now, there would be, on average, 3,000 to 4,000 units to be taken back each year. This means four to five public housing blocks. Relaunching the TPS would lead to fewer recovered units. Just then, members said previous TPS schemes did nothing to affect the supply of PRH units. Back then, we had ample supply of PRH units. Each year, there were 25,000 public housing units completed each year. That's vastly different from where we are now when we have a shortage of PRH units. Not all PRH tenants are interested in buying the flats they are living in. Many tenants worry whether they can afford the down payment, the mortgage. Owners of TPS flats will have to pay for their flat, they also have to pay the future management fees, share the cost of maintaining the common areas of the estate. This means extra long-term expenses. Failure to sell an entire TPS estate will lead to mixed tenure within that estate. Owners often disagree over their concerns and demands about estate management. This calls for an owner's corporation skillful at coordinating decisions and performing functions of estate management. Management practices vary from one OC to the next. That causes the management and maintenance issues many members have referred to because of the varying degrees of success of different OCs.
the HA is working hard to enhance the TPS in many ways to cope with the issues brought by the scheme. First, the HA will continue to offer for sale the unsold units of those 39 TPS estates. Extra incentives will be provided. For example, tenants enjoy a special discount for buying their unit in the first two years of their tenancy. This encourages setting tenants to buy the flat they are living in. Last June, the HA also decided to regularize the sale of recovered TPS flats. Those flats were made part of the sale of flats under the Home Ownership Scheme and the Green Form Subsidized Home Ownership Scheme to eligible Green Form applicants. The established pricing mechanism and resale restriction remained in place. The response was positive and quite good. The first batch of 800 recovered TPS flats were part of the sale of GSH flats 2020-21. All those units sold out. The second batch of 500 recovered TPS flats were part of the sale of HOS flats 2022 to eligible green form applicants. 99% of such flats were sold. Now on management. TPS estates, just like private housing estates, are subject to the Building Management Ordinance Cap 344, Government Leases and Deeds of Mutual Covenant. OCs and the property management companies they hire should follow the ordinance and the DMC by holding management committee meetings or owners' meetings to discuss, vote on, and act on day-to-day -day management measures. All TPS estates have now set up OCs. The HA as the landlord of unsold units sends representatives to sit on management committees where these members share their experience in day-to-day -day management and give professional advice on this front. We also take an active play an active part in the management of TPS estates and support such work in five areas. First, active participation in management meet committee meetings to enhance the management of PMCs and encourage effective engagement between OCs and their PMCs, owners, residents, and the HA. Second, sharing information with OCs and PMCs and giving Timely reminders from the HA to management committees on the updates to ordinances on property management and key issues in management. From time to time, the HA's representatives share their experience in day-to-day -day management and maintenance with OCs and PMCs. The HA also invites the Urban Renewal Authority to brief owners on smart tender and building maintenance schemes such as the Lift Modernization Subsidy Scheme and the Integrated Building Rehabilitation Assistance Scheme. Third taking part in the procurement of goods and services by giving professional advice to OCs on tendering documents. Fourth, implementing the HA's tenancy management policies by enforcing the marking scheme to tackle the misdeeds of tenants of TPS estates, such as letting large amounts of rubbish build up in the unit and throwing objects from heights. The HA will also have regard to actual circumstances in taking tenancy enforcement actions against offending tenants. Fifth, actively exercising title and voting rights on key matters to maintain common facilities, building safety, and environmental hygiene. On repairs, the HA provided a one-off injection of $2.6 billion into the maintenance funds of various estates when the TPS was launched, that amounted to $14,000 per unit. We noticed the sizable balance in the maintenance funds of the 39 TPS estates. Roughly 60% of these estates still have more than half of their maintenance funds left. This shows the maintenance funds are in good financial health. The HA will share further experience in devising maintenance and repair programs, drawing a budget and creating a saving plan for maintenance funds with OCs. The work includes encouraging OCs and their PMCs to update owners regularly on the balance of the maintenance fund or reserve fund and the f future expenditures required for the state maintenance. This will give owners a better sense of the OC's financial position and the importance of using the maintenance fund and reserve fund saving for them and making a good saving plan for the maintenance fund. To ease the burden on owners of smaller private flats in maintenance costs, the government has rolled out a range of measures. The URA runs 
the Integrated Building Rehabilitation Assistance Scheme that offers one-stop financial subsidies and technical support for owners to have works carried out in domestic and common areas. Operation Building Bright 2.0, the Building Drainage System Repair Subsidy Scheme, the Building Maintenance Grant Scheme for needy owners, the Home Renovation Interest-Free Loan, and the Building Safety Loan Scheme cover different areas and cater to people with various needs. These schemes are applicable to the owners and OCs of TPS estates for repair, rectification, and improvement works in their own units and common areas. The HA has always provided management committees and PMCs with such information. In the future, we will be more active in encouraging OCs, management committees, and PMCs to access those schemes. The mixed tenure in TBS estates means the HA's effort cannot replace the vital role played by OCs in estate management. Our experience and observations show owners of TBS estates differ in their expectations of estate management repair and maintenance and in their commitment to such work. OCs also differ in how they work and their objectives and also capacity. This leads to varying degrees of success in estate management. There are capable and dedicated OCs. These OCs regard the HA and organizations related to property management and repair such as the URA, the buildings department and professional bodies in property management as partners who are invited to meetings. These OCs proactively consult the HA on tendering management and repairs before adopting our suggestions. However, some other OCs are less amenable to the HA's advice and involvement. They delay or refuse to give details or replies. On this front, we will continue to engage with OCs and work on improving involvement from OCs. TPS estates are the shared assets of all of its owners. The HA as the landlord of the tenants will remain active in taking part in estate management and supporting the work. We hope more owners of TPS flats will play an active part in estate management and repairs, and we encourage them to do so. We want them to work together to create a well-organized, safe and pleasant living environment for those shared assets to maintain their value in the long term. This is a good outcome that everyone will stand to gain from. Thank you, President. I so submit. Dr. Lo Wai Kok. Deputy President, I thank Mr. Chen Hock Fong for moving the original motion and the other three members for their amendments. The original motion urges the administration to study relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme for public rental housing units. I thank this proposal deserves the administration consideration so that we can offer more options to the public. I'm a member of the Housing Authority. In January 1998, the Housing Authority launched the TPS and it involved seven housing estates, 11 buildings and 6,900 units. The applications received uh, was on the low level and over the 50% of the units were subscribed. In 1998, the Housing Authority rolled out the TPS, and then in 2005, the administration announced that after the uh, Phase 6B of the scheme, it would terminate the scheme. Now, 39 TPS estates are in existence. And according to statistics, as at the end of 2023, about 30,000 TPS units are yet to be sold. It accounts for about 16% of all PRH units. In June 2023, the Housing Authority decided to offer for sale the unsold TPS units in the express flat allocation scheme and it decided to regularize the TPS. In 2023 policy address it was announced that it would the administration would extend 
the mortgage uh, loan scheme for the HOS flats and the mortgage repayment period was extended from 25 to 30 years and this would shorten the turnover time for PRH units. BPA has contributed a lot of ideas to the administration to speed up the supply of public housing to enrich the property ladder under the premise of ensuring that the property prices are stable, the government should relaunch the TPS so that tenants can purchase flats at an affordable price. The administration will speed up the production of housing units in the coming years. The waiting time for public rental housing would be shortened and this allows for favorable conditions for the administration to relaunch TPS. BPA also pushes for large-scale redevelopment of public rental housing and that KPI should be set so that all old public rental housing estates in Hong Kong should be redeveloped. Among the 39 TBS housing estates, over half of them are over 35 years old and most of them are 100 square feet large. With redeveloping, uh, redevelopment of housing units, the administration can relax the building height and make good use of the plot ratio to produce larger flats and improve the quality of these housing units to give more incentives to people to buy these flats. In um, the amendments proposed by Mr. Dennis Lund, it is proposed that there should be measures to prevent speculations. Also, in the amendment, it is mentioned that to prevent speculations, the administration should only should stipulate that owners under the sales scheme for PRH units are only allowed to sell their units to the Hong Kong Housing Authority. I have reservations about that. This restriction would not help PRH tenants with actual needs to uh, for home ownership and this would also uh, deviate from the laissez-faire uh, principle of the market. Thank you. Mr. Ronick Chen, thank you Deputy President. I would like to thank Mr. Chen Hock Fong for the motion and the other three members for their amendments so that we can have a discussion about sales scheme for public rental housing units. The Secretary mentioned about the difficulties the administration encounters to relaunch the scheme. However, I do give my support to relaunching the scheme. The general public has high aspirations for home ownership. This includes um, grassroots families living in public rental housing. Years ago, the government launched the TPS because the administration wanted owners to purchase the flats they were living in at very low prices. This would allow tenants to move up the property ladder and this would also increase the the number of um, Hong Kong people owning a home. Back then, the um, subscription rate was 78%. Some of the tenants chose to continue to rent the flats and therefore some management issues arose. Back then, say one building out of um, four buildings were reserved, then maybe the management issues that we're seeing now will not arise. Well, this scheme has been launched for 26 years and management issues still exist. These TBS estates, they are dilapidated and the uh, property prices are at a very low level. While there are maintenance funds, 
The owners' corporations of these housing estates were not able to tackle the maintenance issues and that some complained that the interests of owners were not protected. So last year, on the 31st of May, at this council, I proposed a motion to discuss the management issues of TPS housing estates so that the housing authority as the major owner of PRH units could take part in tackling these management issues. Even for housing estates which were which only offer flats for renting, the housing authority should oversee the problems. In the administration's reply to my motion, the it says that the TPS flats would be sold to eligible green form holders under GSH scheme. And as mentioned, 800, souls were sold, 800 flats were sold, accounting for 100% of the uh, flats offered for sale. Well, we saw that the um, cooling measures were lifted recently by the government. Some potential HOS buyers turned to the private housing market instead. We still have about 71,400 um, HOS units, and they can be offered to tenants who are living in public housing. Well, 26 years ago, if more factors were taken into account, we won't be seeing the same problems we're seeing now. We have to think about how to minimize problems that arise because of mixed tenure. If we were to relaunch TPS, we may want to have two housing estates as the pilot site. People will be hesitant to purchase a PRH units if there are a lot of management issues. So we can have two PRH housing estates as pilot sites to test out the uh, relaunch of TPS. Thank you, Mr. Kisson Young. Thank you, Deputy President. I speak in support of Mr. Chen's motion. According to the Housing Authority survey, 25% of the PRH tenants uh, were interested in purchasing the flats they were living in, and this is higher than 19% compared to 2017. I've been doing community work for some 20 years. Some Local residents told me that they would like to purchase the flats they were living in because they want to own their own homes. So relaunching TPS is in my manifesto, and this will um, allow the administration to increase revenue. I understand that a lot of problems arose because of TPS. One of the problems was um, issues with mixed tenure. The housing authority is the major owner, but a lot of times it does not take part in voting. And OCs had to be set up in these TPS estates. Parks or public areas, they have to be maintained and repaired regularly. For instance, there are also projects relating to building covers for walkways. The housing authority didn't want to take part in these projects. There, so there are problems in which um, the staircase was owned by three different parties, and none of the owners would like to be responsible. And in the end, while accidents happened, some lights would have to be installed above the staircase to reduce accidents. On the problem of mixed tenure, Owners, when they come across issues, they have to talk to different parties, and this affects the effectiveness of works. I received a lot of complaint cases about water leakage or seepage. Some of the owners, the units above them, they were owned by the um, residents, but they themselves were tenants.
A lot of residents made complaints because of water leakage, and this problem has been dragging on for some two to three years. And residents they were distressed because of these problems. They could not relocate, and the housing authority asked them to go see a doctor for their mental distress. So we have to tackle the management issues. For instance, we should have a brand new owners corporation to deal with these issues, so that when problems arise, the housing estates can be maintained in a proper way. Ideally, all units offered in the public rental uh, in the same housing estates should be um, under the TPS. Also, the housing authority should allow tenants to choose where they can relocate, and they should also be given priority if they want to purchase a unit under HOS. Young housing estates with just uh, below 10 years of age, they may not be able to um, cover the cost. For housing estates that are 20 years old or above, they would be um, suitable for implementing TPS. For tenants who are relocated, who have to be relocated, they should be relocated to somewhere um, near where they are living in now. We should also help people in Hong Kong to move up the property ladder. I suggest that TPS tenants or at the government can allow the housing units to be resold under HOS scheme and with the payment of premium. This would um, increase the incentives for tenants to buy their flats. Thank you. Mr. Chen Siu Hong. Thank you, Deputy President. I thank Mr. Chen Hock Fong for moving the motion and the three members who moved their amendments. This motion lets us discuss relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme of public rental housing units. The Housing Authority rolled out a tenant purchase scheme for green form applicants and those eligible for the express allocation scheme to buy the recovered TPS flats. The two sale exercises were well received. The uptake was 100% and 99%. That points to keen demand for such flats. So the government should look into relaunching the tenant purchase scheme. To do that, we need to first ensure stable supply of public rental housing. The government is working hard on finding land to build public housing. If we sell public housing now, then we will not have enough supply of public housing, and people have to wait longer for public housing. As at the end of 2023, the wait for public housing was on average 5.8 years. Many people are still on the waiting list. The goal is to shorten the way to 4.5 years by 2026-27. So this means it would take more time before we can have enough and a stable supply of public housing estates. We also have to fix the management issues of TPS flats. TPS flats suffer from the issue of mixed tenure. There are people who have bought their flats, but there are tenants, and the housing authority is the major landlord. Owners of TPS flats struggle with maintenance. There are tenants littering in the common areas or burning wax. The common areas of TPS estate fall under the purview of the owner's corporation. Here, the, H the housing authority cannot enforce the marking scheme for those offending tenants. The HAS, the major landlord, needs to review its role as the landlord. Now, on estate maintenance, the HA fails to effectively effect the 
maintenance and repairs needed, especially for leaky pipes and leak seepage through ceilings. Problems drag on for years and go unresolved. Now, there are social welfare organizations that are part of the TPS housing estate. The responsibility for maintenance falls on the owner's corporations, so the maintenance funds cannot cover all the repairs needed for aging facilities. All these issues need to be resolved if the government ever wants to relaunch the TPS. TPS flat owners who wish to sell their flats have different options. In the first two years of buying the flat, TPS flat owners can only sell the flat to the house hospital, the home housing authority. Starting from the third to five to fifth years, the owners can sell the flats to specific secondary market. And then starting from the fifth year, with a premium paid, the owners can sell the flat to a larger market of buyers. Without the premium paid, flat owners' options are limited. Any buyback will not happen at the market rate because owners and the HA differ over the market rate. Letting TPS flat owners sell their flats in the secondary market can give free reign to the market forces, and that's how we can create a housing ladder. The budget this year proposed scrapping all cooling measures. More activity has been seen in the property market. People will be watching whether there will be changes in the property market. The government needs to take into account all factors in the home market before relaunching the TPS scheme. Dr. Frankie Ngan. Deputy President, in 1998, the Housing Authority launched the Tenants Purchase Scheme that helped many people realize their dream of home ownership. There are now 800,000 PRH tenants. Relaunching the TPS now would give these people a chance to own their homes. This can also take pressure off the government on repairing and maintaining public housing estates. But in the 26 years of the TPS implementation, we see the issue of mixed tenure and there are repair and maintenance problems. Many people welcome the TPS and they wondered when we can see the TPS relaunched. TPS can help rebuild a housing ladder, narrow the wealth gap, unleash land value, and help fix our fiscal deficit. The TPS does not entail more costs. It can bring revenue for us to build more public housing, more public facilities, and benefit everyone. With the TPS, people who are sitting tenants do not have to move out. They can save the renovation costs. The prices of TPS flats are affordable to most residents. Sitting tenants who buy those flats don't have to worry about asset checks or being rehoused. So people can have their peace of mind and focus on their career or life. The DAB supports the TPS as it is and hopes the government can launch a new round of TPS for tenants with means to own their homes. There were issues with maintenance under the old TPS, so the government needs to consider this issue too. In the recent years, all kinds of problems came up with TPS estates. Say someone threw objects from height, there were rodents, there were trash units dripping from air conditioners, people urinating everywhere or spitting in the public area. If these offenders are tenants, the HA says they can do nothing. Their hands are tied. 
the law is unclear. The owners' corporation can do no more than recording the offence, advising the people involved, and letting the HA know. When people turn to other departments for help, those departments decline to help by saying they have no power. They say this is government property. They can refer the case to the HA. Oral advice is the best they can do, and nothing more. To fix everything that has gone wrong with TPS estate, the government needs to take action first, improving the marking scheme. The marking scheme needs to be able to address undesirable behavior in common areas on TPS flats. People have high expectations about a new marking scheme. Second. Joint actions between OCs and the government will need to deal with inconsiderate TPS tenants. In the long run, the government needs to improve the building management ordinance and regulate undesirable behavior in public or common areas. Relaunching the TPS can help grassrooters become homeowners. With this, the government can also. Reduce its financial pressure. When the government sells the public rental housing unit, it should also improve the relevant policies so that people can go about their lives. I so submit, Ms. Chen Hao Yan, Deputy President. The government should consider enhancing and relaunching the tenants' purchase scheme. But before doing that. The government needs to ensure we have enough supply of public housing units and improve the policy. In 1998, the Housing Authority launched a tenant purchase scheme for sitting tenants to own their homes. There are 39 estates, more than 180,000 units. 26 years later, more than 30,000 units remain unsold either because the tenants are on CSSA or personal preferences of the tenants, those units remain unsold. So in those estates, there is the issue of mixed tenure and all sorts of management issues. There are more issues than we can name. Noise, rubbish units, leaky pipes. Simply put, a management issue comes up. The issue involves a tenant and an owner of a TPS flat. It's a complicated issue. It takes a long time to reconcile the case. The marking scheme of the HA does not work at TPS flats. The owners' corporations there have no power over tenants. When disputes arise, it's always he said, she said. So management issues drag on and the Owners can do nothing. Now, on repairs and maintenance, the tension is even worse. At every public housing estate, there are thousands of units and other forms of infrastructure. There is also the common area, footbridges, slopes, recreational facilities. When these public units were sold, the government did not give due consideration to how the facilities would be maintained. So the owners of TPS flats cannot enjoy the facilities but have to pay for the maintenance. As buildings age, it becomes more costly to repair the facilities. When large-scale repairs are needed, the bill goes up to the hundreds of millions of dollars. Grassrooters who are TPS flat owners lack the professional expertise and they are confronted with a huge bill and a complicated tendering process and the need to monitor the repairs. There's little these owners can do and they are vulnerable to unscrupulous contractors. The government injected $14,000 into each unit as maintenance fund, but the housing authority did nothing. The maintenance fund became a target for building contractors. That money is a drop in the ocean for the plight of small owners. Selling public housing units allows sitting tenants to buy their units at a low cost.
that helps them become homeowners. But new costs come up, and that goes way beyond small owners' imagination. The HA, as the major landlord, tries to stay neutral, but shirks the responsibility befitting a major landlord that manages its own. Asset. That's why the HA came under fire. Selling public housing units is simply passing the responsibility of management on to citizens. The government needs to learn from its the experience and face up to the issues around boundaries, non-domestic facilities, tenancy disputes. The HA needs to step up to the plate and help out the smaller owners. Early this month. The latest figure shows it takes 5.8 years for people to access public rental housing. This is close to the cap of six years announced by the government. Relaunching a TPS will do nothing to shorten the wait for public rental housing. So, the priority for the government is to ensure a steady supply of public rental housing for allocation. Let's meet people's basic housing needs. Many people are on the waiting list for PRH flats. They cannot pay for their own homes. The government needs to take a targeted approach with a different subsidized sale of flats, GSH, HOS, and the private participation, private sector participation in SSF's pilot scheme. When the government looks at the TPS scheme it needs to ensure there is steady supply of public housing and fix the management issues, and that's the responsible approach. I so submit. Mr. Chen Kimpo, thank you, Deputy President. We have completed legislation for Article 23. We are now free to refocus our energy on livelihood and economic developments. Now we are ready to give the government a lot of practical suggestions to address the deep-rooted issue. Now, I thank today's motion. TPS can allow PRH tenants to have their own home and the government can recover cost. This is good for everyone. However, because of the management and maintenance issues, many owners are troubled. The government must consider carefully before relaunching the scheme. There are a lot of calls for relaunching TPS. One of the reasons is because of the fiscal deficit, because of the higher cost of building public housing, the HA is in fiscal deficit. Now, there is some $70 billion left in the fund. Now, by 2030, there will be only some $40 billion left. Now, with some flags sold, the HA can recover part of the cost and avoid asking for the government to inject fund into the account. I think that is one of the most important considerations behind relaunching TPS. However, I think the fiscal deficit is just a cyclical issue in the short term because of the transformation of our economic structure. Now, in a few years' time, we're going to come back to black. So fiscal deficit is only one consideration to take. The government shouldn't decide to sell PRH, PRH assets simply because of a fiscal deficit. And pricing is a concern. We need to recover costs, but we can't make it too pricey. Otherwise, the PRH tenants cannot afford it. Selling a large number of PRH units will reduce the number of units recovered, and the supply would be driven down. In studying relaunching the scheme, we need to think about how to enhance the TPS and plug the loopholes. Under the TPS model, there is a mixed tenure. There are owners and there are tenants. For those units which are rented out, the management is, uh, is taken care of by the housing authority. For the purchase flags, and the owners would have to be responsible for the maintenance. There are two different kinds of management models. It, um, it would give rise to disputes. In the past, there were a lot of disputes concerning slope maintenance and retrofitting uh, the building. The issues were not addressed and the problems remained. We need to address all these problems, otherwise this good measure would become bad. Mr. Andrew Lam, Deputy President, I thank Mr. Chen Hapfong for moving this motion and the amendments made by others. In early 1998, the TPS was launched 
The idea is to allow tenants to become homeowners to achieve the 70 percent goal of home ownership. Now, there are 39 TPS estates. They are well received. Indeed, many tenants would like to see a relaunch of the scheme. We can see that everyone wants to have their own home. According to the 2022-23 figures kept by the HA, the average maintenance and management cost amounts to $12,000 per unit. Now, there are still some 30,000 units unsold in older buildings. The cost is much higher than a five-digit figure. The cost is exorbitant. Now, with the mixed tenure, there are lots of conflicts. It wastes time. It is a waste of time and money to manage the building, and the government has a very awkward role in management. Now, from whatever perspective, the government should make a decision concerning the TPS. In 2005, the TPS was suspended because selling out PRH units would drift, would drive down the supply of public housing and reduce the turnover rate. Now, in 2005, there were 7 million people with 2.5 million households. The ratio of private ownership was 53 percent, a record high. At that year, there were 70, 720,000 public housing units with some 19,000 applicants pending. The waiting time was 1.8 year on average. Today, we have 7.5 million people and 90 percent more fam more households. That is 2.27 million. However, private ownership ratio is now only 50 percent. Now there are 80, 860,000 public housing units, but the there are some 220,000 applicants waiting, and the waiting time is eight years. It highlights several problems. Uh, basically, a lot of households choose to wait for PRH units. And by enhancing the supply of PRH units, it doesn't mean that the waiting time will be shortened because the safety net is narrow. And also, the housing policy has not improved. Now, we need to ensure housing supply for the grassroots, but we shouldn't see TPS as the ultimate goal. This is not the finish line. We have This is just the starting line. We have to encourage PRH tenants to move to GSH or HOS and even the private sector. We need to understand the challenges they face in moving up the housing ladder. Now, by selling off some PRH units to the grassroots people and the sitting tenants, it can help the government's budget and help more people enjoy the fulfillment of home ownership. However, to encourage upward mobility and childbearing, this is not a good option. After selling the houses to the tenants, if we don't allow the tenants to resell their houses and with no improvements to the living standard, why would they sell their houses? Why would they buy the houses? Now we haven't reviewed we haven't conducted a review on the policy to see the number of households requiring the safety net. And we haven't considered how many families can afford buying a unit themselves. We need to enhance the review. The government should review the long term housing strategy to study how to help people become homeowners. Thank you. Mr. Champula. Thank you, Deputy President. In 2005, the TPS was suspended. In recent times, there were lots of calls for the scheme to be relaunched. Indeed, with the scheme, more households will have their own home and it can enhance the cash flow of the government. But to relaunch the scheme, we need to enhance the sales scheme, as suggested by Mr. Chen Hongfeng. We need to sort out the following issues. First, mixed tenure and the chaos and the resulting chaos in management. Now, there are 39 TPS estates with more than 180,000 units. As at June last year, some 100,000 have been sold. 
despite the suspension of the scheme for some 20 years, there is still the problem of mixed tenure still exists and the chaotic situation remains. Even for simple maintenance projects, you need to go through the OC, the MC, and also various owners and tenants. The duties are not clear and the projects have been delayed. Now with most buildings now aged 30 to 40 years old, their structures are weakened. There are concrete spalling and uh, weakened structure, structural issues. Now despite there is a sinking fund for repairing the buildings to the equivalent of uh, $14,000 per unit, still many TPS estates were built in the 80s. Now the sinking fund for maintenance is far from sufficient. Now the marking scheme to estates management does not apply to homeowners in the TPS. They can commit um, misdeeds, for example, uh, littering, and they are not subject, subject, subject to the marking scheme. Now these are long-standing issues. Whether the government decide to relaunch the scheme or not, we have to face the management issues squarely. As the largest landlord of the PRH and TPS estates, the Housing Authority must actively involve in the management of the estates. Also, in this term of the government, the waiting time for PRH allocation has been shortened, but there is still a long way to go before we can um, achieve the three-year waiting time. The average waiting time is 5.8 years. For singleton applicants, uh, the waiting time is four years. The government has identified land to meet the 10-year supply target. However, the supply of public housing is still unstable. Besides newly built units, if we sell PRH units to the sitting tenants, it would reduce the overall supply of public housing units and reduce the turnover. We may see longer waiting time. So we need to wait until the public housing supply becomes stable and is sufficient to meet the demand of society before we relaunch the TBS. Deputy President, I so submit. Mr. Edward Lau. Thank you, Deputy President. I give my full support to the motion moved by Mr. Chen Hock Fung as well as the amendments made by other members. I've been living in public rental housing unit when I was little, and my family bought a PRH unit, and they've been staying there in the same unit. I've been working in the neighborhood, and I've been serving uh, residents of PRH units. I listened to residents I have been serving and they told me by purchasing the flats they were living in, a lot of problems were settled for them. So people all along have been giving their support to the tenants purchase scheme. The scheme was introduced back in 1998. This allows people to move up the property ladder. There are currently 39 TPS housing estates involving about 180,000 units. About 152,000 TPS units have been sold, accounting for 80% of all TPS units. So it shows that the scheme has been popular and 80% of the tenants bought these flats with their own money. By relaunching the TPS, it would allow more PRH tenants to purchase the flats they are living in. Also, it would help ease the financial pressure of the government. This will allow us to stabilize our society and 
boost the sense of well-being of our people. According to a survey conducted by the DAB, 90% of the respondents support the relaunch of TPS. Over 80% of the respondents indicated that they would buy the flats they are now living in. Compared to 2019, when we conducted the same type of survey back then, the 87% of the respondents supported the scheme, and only 76% of the respondents said they would purchase the flats they were living in. So we see that we are getting more support for this TPS. So PRH tenants are willing to purchase the flats they are living in. There are views that to relaunch TPS, it would uh, reduce turnover of PRH units. Well, this is an historical issue because back then there was a termination in terms of housing supply, and this exerted pressure on the waiting time for PRH units. Would this problem persist? I'm quite optimistic. In the coming year, according to land supply, we'll have about 15,000 15, units to be supplied. And this is higher than the original estimate. According to the administration, in the coming 10 years, there is a need for 308,000 housing units. And the government has already identified 3,370 hectares of land which would provide 410,000 flats and this is um, exceeding the original target by 100,000 units. So I thank the government for its hard work. We can also see at the same time, even if we are selling these TPS units, it would not affect housing supply. On management issues, Mr. Chen Hock Fung offered a lot of suggestions and ideas. I'm not going to go into the details here. The problems that are of the government's concern will be settled, and we do see support from the community to relaunch the scheme. So I hope um, that the government will relaunch the scheme. I so submit. Thank you. Twelve members are waiting to speak. I believe we can finish the motion debate at around 7 p.m. I think we should finish the motion debate before we adjourn the meeting. Mr. Tony J, President, the SAR government has been enhancing speed and efficiency in terms of producing more housing. Over the past two years, I suggested to the government that it should comprehensively review its housing policy. In the past, the government has been placing emphasis on offering more housing. We have to think of ways to ease the financial burden of the housing authority and encourage more people to move up the property ladder. Young people, they see public rental housing as their only option for home ownership. PRH units is the biggest target in their lives. The 70 to 30 um, split for public rental housing and private housing should be reviewed. The balloting mechanism for HOS schemes should also be reviewed. The mortgage mechanism should also be reviewed to encourage young people to move up the social ladder. The floor area per capita should also be improved.
the old tenants purchase scheme showed a lot of problems. With mixed tenure, management issues and repair issues arise. There were also speculations that boosted the price of public rental housing units. We're yet to see an adequate supply of public housing. The waiting time for PRX units has been long. If we start to sell TPS units again, then the waiting time will be longer. So I think we should first ensure that there is a stable supply for public rental housing and that the previous TPS is optimized before the government consider relaunching the scheme. Mr. Dennis Leung proposed in his amendment that the government should stipulate that owners are only allowed to sell their PRH units to the Hong Kong Housing Authority. I made a similar proposal before. If we're yet to see an adequate supply of housing, I think these PRH units should not go to the private market. Whether or not the owners have to pay a premium. Otherwise, the government will have to build more public rental housing units as well as HOS units to replenish the stock. We have to take into consideration land premium and construction costs to build a brand new public rental housing estate. The cost would not be lower than buying back the PRH units. I agree with what some of the members said that the price of the PRH units should be set based on the cost as well as the increased value of the property. Then we won't see a reasonably high price for a PRH unit. And this excludes the discount as well as the money saved by the tenant because the tenant had been paying a rent that is way below a market rate. I so submit. Thank you. Mr. Gary Zhang. President, I think this is a very good topic and I think we should have a full discussion on this topic. The Secretary mentioned a number of considerations. I agree to some of the points she mentioned. I don't th I agree that subsidized housing should not easily go into the private market. The government has been working hard to identify land and ask for funding from the Legislative Council to build more housing. Waiting time for PRS units has been long and housing issues has continued to bother people in Hong Kong. Even though one day the waiting time might be shortened, I still think that we should not easily let subsidized housing to go into the private market. Private housing and subsidized housing, they should be separated. Private equity market in Hong Kong sees fluctuation, so we have to have a stable supply of public housing, be it the rental market or the um, market for PRH units for sale. And this will help address the housing needs of people in Hong Kong. So we have to look at the private market as well as the market for subsidized housing separately. Otherwise, all the efforts that we have been put into providing more housing would be wasted. We have to first stabilize the public housing market. Then we can think about 
how we can settle the issue of mixed tenure. so that owners can also enjoy the benefits of economic growth in Hong Kong and they can deal with the challenges presented by high inflation. So one thing we have to keep in mind is that we should not allow subsidized housing units to go into the private market. There shouldn't be such a mechanism. So I think the amendment made by Mr. Dennis Leung is right. We have to protect the market of the subsidized housing, whether by buying back the PRH units it would cause any issues, we can study that further. Mr. Tony Che raised a number of proposals in terms of setting the price for a PRH unit. So we have to first protect the market for subsidized housing and therefore I give my support to the amendment proposed by Mr. Dennis Leung. And it is only if this amendment is passed that I would support the original motion or other amendments. I still have some time left. Some members mentioned about problems associated with TPS estates. In my community, there are lots of TPS housing estates. And indeed, there are lots of management issues with these housing estates. In some cases, the owner's corporation can request the property management companies not to bring visitors to their housing estates. This violates basic human rights. However, because of mixed tenure, owners or tenants may not be familiar with their legitimate rights and therefore some unreasonable management issues arise. We need good management for TPS estates, otherwise we should not easily sell TPS units. Thank you. Mr. Jeffrey Lim. Thank you, President. Everyone wants to have a good place to live. I want everyone to have access to housing. I want everyone to be able to access bigger, better housing. That's why the BPA supports finding land and building flats. And we also support having a minimum living space. Back in 2019, the BPA submitted policy address suggestions. We proposed relaunching the tenant purchase scheme so that sitting tenants can buy their flat at affordable rate. This can foster social cohesion, reduce social tension. We also encouraged the government to sell the unsold inventory. We will have more land and housing. The government should consider relaunching the TPS to meet the home ownership aspiration of many people. Selling PRH units can also bring in extra revenue for our coffers. Given the government's current fiscal position, new revenue can bring in new vitality. The old TPS has been around for more than 25 years. We can see the mixed tenure under the old TPS generated many issues, including responsibilities for maintenance under the existing TPS owners of TPS flats have to pay for the repairs of their units and also the common areas. Some TPS residents only found out after buying their flats that they were responsible for the maintenance of common areas. So any future relaunch of the TPS will require careful handling of these management issues. We need to let the smaller owners handle the management maintenance issues at reasonable costs. We should not allow building safety issues to fester.
at TPS flat. But let's also be mindful that every PRH flat we sell is a fl flat that we will no longer own. We need to guard against speculation of PRH flat so that P TPS flat are put to good use. There will need to be restrictions on resale. The government needs to further improve the housing ladder and take a multi pronged approach to ensure a steady supply of housing units. This will ensure enough flat on the market and will not lengthen the waiting time for public rental flat. And this means we should speed up the development of the northern metropolis. We need to adjust the split of public and private housing. We need to work towards a goal of redeveloping the 12 oldest public rental housing estates in Hong Kong and also increasing the plot ratio of certain flats. There were 39 TPS flats, more than half of them are over 35 years old. As buildings age, the facilities worsen in condition. That will make the buildings less attractive to residents. So the, host the housing authorities should launch massive building maintenance and repair campaigns to make buildings better. Let's not turn those buildings into hazardous buildings. The government should also plan for the building of TPS flats. Let's build bigger and better flats to make them more attractive. The management and maintenance of TPS flat should work like this. The TPS flat owners pay a management fee to the HA. The sale documents should set out clearly the responsibilities for maintenance to allay bias concerns. I hope the government can consider my suggestions and so submit. Mr. Bill Tank. Thank you, Chairman. This motion today has been discussed in the community often. Mr. Dennis Long's amendment is the collective wisdom of the FTU. Our amendment comes with a concrete proposal. It's okay to sell a TPS flat, but only to the housing authority because we need to make sure homes are for living in, not for speculation. I have been serving public housing estates as a district councillor for 12 years. Some local residents wondered whether they can buy their own flats. They are used to living in the area. Their children have grown up. But their children's income has exceeded the income limit. At, income limit. These residents don't want to be considered as well of tenants. No one is comfortable about admitting that they want to sell their unit for a profit. And I doubt anyone will do that. So why not allow tenants buy their flats and then only to resell to the housing authority? That can curb speculation. We can kill three birds with one stone, given our amendment. We will let tenants buy their units, but they can only resell the unit to the HA. First, we can overcome the problem with the well-off tenant policy. Because once tenants buy the flat, there's no need to worry about the wealthy tenant policy, no need to remove the name of children. Now, when the flat cannot be freely traded on the market, then we can also save some of the worries. And also, we're proposing that let the tenants buy the flat, but then the HA can help with the maintenance. This restriction on resale to the HA only will mean 
the flats are not freely traded commodities. So in this case, we don't need an owner's corporation. Instead, we have an owner's association. The HA will take the lead. So now we can even avoid the problem where H where PRH tenants lack the expertise over how to manage the estate and we can save all the trouble. Now, how do we ensure a just public housing system under the land resumption ordinance? We can resume private land. Building public housing is a legitimate purpose for resuming private land. But some may accuse the government of resuming private land for public housing that are that is eventually turned into private flats that can be sold. So that will compromise our land resumption ordinance. It's the supreme option. This great option will be compromised and come under doubt. So the FTU's proposal can meet the aspirations from PRH tenants. People don't have to worry about the wealthy tenant policy. We can overcome the constraint. We can ensure no speculation of these flats. And we can also give the HA a special status to take the lead in the management of those TPS flats. So I hope other members can support Mr. Dennis Leung's amendment and so submit. Ms. Connie Lam. Thank you, President. I thank Mr. Chen Hock Fong for his motion on relaunching and enhancing the sale scheme for public rental housing units. I support the motion. Hong Kong has a long standing housing shortage. Many families have to wait many years for public housing. With the relaunching and enhancing of the sale scheme for PRH units, families will be able to pay for their homes. Young people can realize their dream of home ownership. People can also move up the social ladder. One reason for my support for this motion is that we can provide people with a stable environment. Let's look at the GSH flat sale 2020-21 and the HOS flat sale 2022. HOS sale rate nearly 100%. This points to very keen demand from the market for subsidized sale flats. People seek these flats. In Saikong, there are people in their 70s and 80s. They came to me for help. Home ownership aspirations are not exclusive to young people. Even for those in their 70s and 80s, on their annuities take an interest. So with subsidized sale flats, there are more housing options. People can get their own space. People who cannot afford private flats or HOS flats still have other options. So let's have more public rental housing units for sale. Hong Kong is an open economy. Yesterday, we saw the historic moment. We got through the Safeguarding National Security Bill. We need to zero in on our economy. We can sell public rental housing units that will bring us a very sizable revenue. This can boost the economy. This can also reduce the cost on maintenance and repairs. Let the users pay and we can also fix the problem of long-standing losses and low uptake. Few people move out of public housing units. People sort of inherit public housing units. Let those with the means buy their housing units. And then we can increase the turnover rate. And we can avoid waste of the public housing unit. Say a public housing unit costs $2 million on the market. The government sells the unit for $1 million. The government can generate income and stimulate other forms of economy, renovation, infrastructure, for example. 
a planned and orderly approach to the sale of PRH unit will do little to rock the property market. The wealthy will buy $10 million homes. They will not go for public housing units. The government has been taking the lead to build public housing. There is no competition. Let's have private participation in building public housing. Let's look at Taihang West. There is private involvement. Then we will have a more vibrant and healthy market that can stimulate innovation and boost efficiency. We will have diversity over monotony, and we will have more reasonably priced public flats. We can give people more housing options. Selling public housing units can boost the economy and create jobs. We can stimulate the demand for the construction sector. We can further boost the economy. More jobs for people in Hong Kong. This can also improve community infrastructure, improve people's lives, and create a more cohesive social ambience. To help our government manage its fiscal deficit, we can take a phased approach to selling PRH units. This is the first step. This can help address the housing issue and bring economic benefits and help drive our social development. All in all, this scheme is a key measure to address our housing problem. Selling PRH units can let low-income families buy the homes they can afford. And this can realize the homeownership scheme. Please stop speaking. Mr. Rin Kong, thank you, President. I thank Mr. Chen Hafeng for his motion. Today, the government is facing a huge fiscal deficit, and turnover rate for PRH units is low. If the government relaunched the TPS, it is just a temporary relief. Now, when we talk about public housing issues, we need to focus on the crux of the problem for the general public. The housing issue is not about whether to buy or to rent. It's a yes or no question. It is a sad topic. If you can't get an allocation of PRH units, you can only live in a subdivided unit. This is the kind of deep, deep rooted issue that the central government asks us to resolve. Now, if we can't shorten the waiting time for PRH units and relaunch the TPS at the inappropriate time. Well, we already have a low supply of public housing units. Although we can help some to get a home, it is a poison pill. Now, with the fiscal deficit, by relaunching the TPS, we can alleviate the government's fiscal pressure a bit. But this is simplifying the issue. We are transferring the fiscal burden to the most fragile group in the society. If you look at previous policy addresses, many chief executives have mentioned that they would speed up the production of public housing units and address the grassroots housing issues. Now, with that promise in mind, if we, if we now relaunch the TPS, it would perplex the public. What is the government's direction, it sends a very mixed signal, and it would cause a lot of social friction. Now, TPS did resolve the housing problem for some grassroots families. However, in Hong Kong, which is a place with scarce land supply, this is just a scratching the edge across the boot. Now, we need to be sustainable. The TPS estates are parts of our public housing resource. If we allow private ownership for these public resources, it would drive down the supply of public housing and it would lengthen the time of wait. All the problems arising from TPS are not resolved yet. Chaotic management and low efficiency in property management the problems with the owner's corporation and the marketing scheme not applied to the owners. All of these are not resolved. The housing authority and the housing departments are unable to resolve these issues. Now we need to take a bold approach 
and break new ground in resolving this issue. Now, TPS is a policy with the relevant historical background, but we need to be scientific and move with times. It is proven that there are inherent problems within the TPS. Public housing is the most important public resource. It has a significant meaning in terms of redistribution of wealth and fairness in society. In deciding whether we should relaunch TPS, we need to consider whether it will really be helpful in addressing the deep-rooted issues in Hong Kong. We need to tread carefully. Mr. Stanley Lee. Thank you, President. Mr. Chan Hock Fung moved the motion on relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme for public rental housing units. I have deep feelings. Over the past two decades, the community I served as a district councillor was Yuan Estate, a TPS estate in Mao Shan. Now the title of the motion is Relaunching and Enhancing and means both relaunching and enhancing must happen simultaneously. In the debate, many members mentioned the existing issues with TPS. I agree and true. There are they are there are really problems with TPS. So the question is whether we should relaunch the TPS. Mr. Chen Hofeng mentioned the DAB's survey. A lot of sitting tenants would like to buy the flags they are living in. They even apply for rehousing with the HJ to TPS estates so that they can have the option of buying the flags. Why would they do that? Well, you imagine if you are living in a rented unit for a very long time. Do you feel that it is your own home? Would you be willing to splash out money to make it your dream house? I don't think so. But if you are the owner, you would treasure the house. You would invest more in the house because it is your permanent home. That's the reality. TPS can offer a permanent home to our citizens. So I support relaunching and enhancing TPS. These two concepts must exist together. By relaunching, some may think that we are trying to relaunch the old program with all the previous flaws. These problems can be solved. Mr. Channel Fong and also the DAB suggested giving the housing department a greater role in management. And they told us their design. For example, setting aside parts of the revenue generated from the sale as a sinking fund for maintenance with injection by the housing department and allowing the housing department to manage the estate. So this can be done. It's just about doing some maths and having the will to do it. So relaunching and enhancing can happen together. In Mr. Dennis Leung's amendment, he says, the government should stipulate that owners under the TPS 2.0 should only be allowed to sell their units back to the housing authority. Oh, but by then, the units may become very dilapidated. The HA has to spend money on buying the home and renovating the home. So there should be other options. The owners can choose to sell the house back to the HA or in the free market. They should be given the liberty to do so. So I have reservation on Mr. Dennis Leung's amendment. Now the management issues, including the communal 
facilities and common areas. This is what makes the public worry. So as I said, we need to take forward relaunching and enhancing simultaneously. Then we can meet the aspiration of the public. Now you only have to pay several thousand dollars for rent as um, a PRH tenant. Then the next rung of the ladder is uh, $11,000 for renting a home in the private market. There is a huge gap between the two rungs. If I can spend four or five thousand dollars in living in the units that I'm owning, that would be great. So I support the motion. Mr. Peter Chiu. Thank you, President. Today's motion is relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme for PRH units. I declare interest. I'm a member of the Housing Authority. Now simply simply put, today's motion is whether we should allow sitting tenants in PRH estates to buy the flags and become homeowner. In 1991, before the um, return to the motherland, there was such a scheme, and 1998, another round. In the first round, only 7.4% of the units were sold, so it was a failure. The second time, in 2005, the then government said that there were problems for units unsold, and with some units sold, it would it led to a lot of problems in management and repair. Now, some units, actually, the units in the estate are supposed to be leased to um, PRH applicants. If some are sold, then the supply would dwindle. Now, the ultimate goal is to help those in need, those who cannot afford to buy a home or rent a home in the private market. We have to give them a roof, so this is an option for them. Now, some people who earn $10,000 per month, they can choose to um, rent a PRH unit, and in after 10 years, uh, their, their income, they earn more and they have children, so they would choose to move to um, other markets. Now, some say, we sh some say we should allow the sitting tenants to remain in the house and buy and choose to buy the flat. But there are problems, for instance, management issues. And second, you need to give the flags to those in need. They become more out, more well off, so they should be asked to vacate the house. The waiting time is five point eight years. The applicants on the waiting list have to live in subdivided units, and now you are saying that we should let the sitting tenants who have become more well off to buy the house. There is a problem for logic, Mr. Chen Yong. Thank you, President. I thank Mr. Chang Hock Fung for moving the motion on relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme for public rental housing units. Like President Xi Jinping said, we need to enhance people's sense of well being. We have to enhance the idea of family among the community, and we have to show care and love to each other. Some members mentioned about problems such as mixed tenure and the role of management of the housing authority. Whether we sell the units or not, I think the housing authority has to enhance its management. In the past, the tenants purchase scheme yielded great results. It's just that we saw a drop in the number of units sold because of certain reasons. What I want to say is that in most of the private housing estates in Hong Kong, there are both tenants and owners. We have to ensure how we can manage these housing estates well. Property management companies as well as the Hong Kong Housing Authority have to enhance their management. They have to do it together with the owners' um, corporations.
if the housing authority or the OCs get to take part in the management process, then issues can be resolved. Some members t also talked about turnover of PRH units. It is mostly grassroots families that are living in PRH units now. People grow up in PRH units. Children who grow up from PRH units may be able to afford to buy the units that they are living in. If you don't sell these units, children will have to move out of these housing estates. Should you force elderly tenants to leave the housing estates? If you relaunch the TPS, then you can keep the entire family together. Young people nowadays are hard to purchase a flat. If you allow them to stay in public rental housing units, you will help them to stay with their family. We need to stick to facts and data as we study whether we should relaunch the scheme. Mr. Chang Hock Fung urges the administration to study relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme for public rental housing units. He urges the administration to study the matter. So you have to study when is the appropriate time to relaunch the housing unit scheme. You should also think about whether you should first launch a pilot scheme, then you can help enhance the sense of well-being of families. You can then take care of elderly people of our city. You can ensure that there are enough resources for our children to grow up in this city. Thank you. Mr. Lee Chen Keng. President, a lot of Chinese people would like to own their homes. TPS helped deal with a lot of home ownership issues. Last year, in this council, we discussed management issues under the Tenants Purchase Scheme. Some members, including Ms. Doreen Kong as well as Mr. Peter Xiu, also talked about these issues. There is a question mark to TPS because it, it is part of um, public housing. Would that impede the turnover of public housing units if we relaunch the scheme? Would it make the waiting time for PRS units longer? Well, I want to focus on two problems, that is management and maintenance issues of TPS housing estates. Some owners told us that they took money out of their own pocket to purchase the units, but they feel like they have lost the money. Because they have to pay for maintenance and repair. For instance, common area public facilities including rams, sports courts, the maintenance of all these facilities have to be the cost of maintenance have to be shared among owners. The housing department is responsible for these management and repair works. However, they don't do anything or they don't make constructive comments during meetings with owners' corporations and we see unfairness because of this. There may be bid rigging because of this. There are also disputes and conflicts between owners and tenants. We have owners and tenants in the same housing estate and the marking scheme for uh, tackling misdeeds of tenants may not work effectively. There is water seepage problem. There are all kinds of problems within the housing estate and disputes between tenants and owners may arise. If we are to enhance the tenants purchase scheme, we'll have to rename it.
we can draw reference from the practice in Singapore. They have HDB and they also allow people to purchase HDB flats. The government help deals with renovation issues for the tenants. I think the government has to consider all the problems I mentioned before it considers relaunching the scheme. Thank you. Mr. Kwok Wai Kung. Thank you, President. I speak in support of the amendment made by Mr. Dennis Lowe. I'd also like to thank Mr. Chang Hock Fung for moving the original motion so that we have the chance to discuss this topic today. As mentioned by the Secretary, the government has no plan in the short term to expand the tenants purchase scheme. However, I think it's good that we can have a discussion about this here. Properties in Hong Kong are too expensive. We all aspire to have our own homes. However, should we purchase our own homes necessarily? People who live in public rental housing, they don't have to worry about down payment or mortgage. I was previously a member of the Housing Authority. When I served as a member, it was when the GSH was rolled out. There was a need for GSH to tackle the issue about mixed tenure. We saw the launch of GSH. The positioning of the scheme was clear, and it's been effective. With GSH, should we still have the tenant purchase scheme? I think we have to consider all kinds of factors before we decide whether to relaunch the scheme. I think this is an important tool for us to redistribute resources in the community. PRH is a kind of subsidy for our people. If all PRH units are sold, then the government will lack an important tool to reallocate resources. Back in 2000, I worked as the assistant of Ms. Chen Yun Han. And I attended a resident um, meeting. Back then, Ms. Chen told residents that it looked like the owners paid a very low price to purchase their units, but then at the same time, they had to take up greater responsibilities. I also served as a logical member of geographical constituency. One member told me that after buying a PRH unit, he had to pay a lot of money for maintenance and repair. In Fonghua Estate, there are two buildings. All three blocks were situated on the hill, and they have to use pipes to pump water to the residential units. In the past, the Hong Kong Housing Authority took care of the water pumping problem. But after the units were sold under the TPS, the residents or the owners had to take care of the water problem themselves. And the problem still exists now. And the government would not build another water pipe for them to resolve the issue. If the government is to relaunch the public, uh, relaunch the tenants purchase scheme, the government will only sell a unit, but not the facilities in the vicinity. We should make reference to the HDB flats in Singapore. We should prevent speculations. And we have to consider whether 
tenants are interested in purchasing the units they are living in from the Hong Kong Housing Authority. We have to set a great target if we are to relaunch the scheme. Can we follow the practice in Singapore like the HDB flats which managed to offer homes to the people? Thank you. Dr. Junius Ho, President, the government should consider relaunching a scheme to sell public rental housing flats. This is worth exploring. After so many years, there are three reasons for me saying this. First, the market. We're not trying to interfere with the market. We're creating a market instead. We need to create a good market. In Hong Kong, millions of people are living in public rental housing estate. Many people believe in home ownership. People feel more assured when they own their homes. So to meet this public aspiration, we need to give people what they want. Now on the Tenant Purchase Scheme or TPS, it's about the mixed tenure. So management issues come up, there's tension, you have both tenants and owners there. We think about the issue when someone has brought this up. 180,000 people living there, 81% of the units have been sold. For the remaining 19% of the units, the unsold TPS units, can we have flexibility? For the 19% of unsold units, we cannot force those tenants to force to buy those flats. Let's tell them they get priority in buying their flats. If not, let's open up the 19% of unsold TPS units to all PRH residents across the city because other people will be keen to buy those 19% of TPS flats. Let's have the, the Housing Authority coordinate the work. If the sitting tenants of the 19% of unsold TPS flats don't buy those flats, let's open up the flats for other PLH tenants buy those flats. We are stuck with this 81 versus 19 split of owners versus tenants. We are stuck with the VIX tenure. The marking scheme doesn't work. The business gets complicated. But my idea can come in. I'm offering you this idea. It's a million dollar idea. I'm giving you the idea because you don't. Ha you cannot come up with it. So now my second point. Our housing policy is really getting people to move down instead of move up the housing ladder. People try to get on the queue for public rental housing as soon as they graduate. And even for people who are well off, they worry about exceeding the income limit for public rental housing. So they wonder if their children can get paid in cash instead to stay within the income limit. This is a serious problem. Is the government aware of the issue? Is there enforcement? No. Dishwashers get paid in cash. So it's a system that encourages breaking the law, tax evasion. The public housing system as it is encourages moving down the housing ladder. When you take my idea and you have all the TPS flats, you have a TPS estate of owners, we can do many things about the estate. Let's create the market and we can have endless possibilities.
TPS flat owners should be allowed to sell their flats. But we need to have some kind of restrictions because the sitting tenants buy their flats at a discount. So when they sell it, the same discount should apply too. But the housing authority can also decide not to buy back and let the tenants or owners sell their flats instead. We can think about that, Mr. Ambrose Lam. I welcome Mr. Chen Hock Fong's motion so that we can discuss this idea. Selling public rental housing flats will disrupt the housing ladder, and this can create many long term issues. Just then, Mr. Peter Xu and Mr. Doreen Kong discussed the issues I have in mind. Now, one more point from me. It's about maintenance for aging building stock. Take Choi Hong Estate, Wafu Estate. The HA owns the estate. Find a satisfactory solution and the redevelopment can happen. But when you have PRH units that have been sold, there are owners, not everyone is a tenant, redevelopment will prove tricky. When the HA is not the major landlord, it, the HA will have little say. The HA may believe they are better off redeveloping the estate, but some owners may oppose, and then the government will have to spend money to buy back the TPS flats, and then we can proceed with the compulsory sale, and that will cause problems. The latest government figures show for the 165 compulsory sale cases, the proceeds to each owner on average was 1.83 times of the original property value of those owners. So the government will have to pay those owners extra to buy back the flat, and that will be a cost to taxpayers. So selling PRH units will not be a good thing. Let's think this through carefully. Selling PRH units will disrupt our housing ladder and prevent people with housing needs to get on the housing ladder and access public housing. I urge the Secretary for Housing to act with caution on this point. Dr. Simon Lee. Thank you. I've heard pros and cons, in-depth, well-justified arguments. So let me propose an alternative perspective. My point is similar to that made by Mr. Ambrose Lam. I'm approaching this as a matter of town planning. Have we thought about why we haven't had shanty towns, concentrated shanty towns in Hong Kong? There are many factors at play. We have our social welfare system. The government owns many public housing estates. The housing estates age society changes over time, the government can redevelop the estate and rehouse the residents elsewhere. So we don't have concentrated shanty towns. When you look at public housing in that light, you see public housing is a safety net. Public housing is also a buffer for town planning. I so submit. I just hope I can bring in this fresh perspective. Does any other wi member wish to speak? Okay. Mr. Chen Hofeng, you may now speak on the amendments. President, I thank the three members for their amendments. 27 members have spoken on this topic. Understand that members have different views on whether we should relaunch the tenants purchase scheme. Members have different expectations on the scheme. I've listened to different views. I'm happy that we have this discussion. It shows that after the improved electoral system, we can have constructive discussions on livelihood issues. I'd like to respond to some of the views raised. In my original motion, Mr. Chang Kok Fong, you are supposed to speak on the amendments. Yes, I think the administration should not simply reject 
our proposal. As mentioned in my original motion, our goal is to have the administration study relaunching and enhancing the sales scheme for PRH units to help address fiscal deficit. Ms. Chen Yutmin enriches our discussion with her amendment, so I support her amendment. As to the amendment made by Mr. Scott Leung, I speak in support of that as well. We're seeing a more stable housing supply. Over the past five years, there are about 10,000 public rental housing units per year, and in the next year, we have 20,000. And according to the government, we will see 30,000 public rental housing units. So according to the government, we have stable housing supply, and there are 20,000 new applicants for PRH units. So we have adequate supply of public housing. And this is in line with the statistics provided by Mr. Scott Lone. So I speak in support of the amendment made by Mr. Lone. On the amendment made by Mr. Dennis Lone, there are several reasons why I do not support his amendment. The Hong Kong Housing Authority will not buy back units that have been sold because it may affect the financial position of the Housing Authority. Also, coming up every year, the Housing Authority will have to build 40,000 units per year, so it's under great pressure. We also have to allow owners or tenants to enjoy benefits of increased value of their properties. Under HOS and GSH, are you also going to restrict owners to only selling the reselling the um, units to the owners or to the government? So the amendment made by Mr. Dennis Leung may affect the sales of public housing units. So we object to their, his proposal. Thank you. Secretary for Housing. President, I thank Mr. Chen Hock Fong and other members who spoke on this motion. I thank them for their interest in exploring ways to relaunch and enhance the tenants' purchase scheme. Members shared many great insights. I can see where members are coming from, and that is helping tenants with means to own their homes, giving them a stronger sense of belonging to the community, maintaining social stability, letting grassrooters move up the social ladder, narrowing the wealth gap. Based on the current financial forecast, the Housing Authority can meet the building costs up to 2027 to 28, and that's building 110,000 public housing units. But the housing supply will happen in a backloaded way. This means two-thirds of the units will be completed in the second five-year period. The building costs will keep rising starting from 2028 to 29. That's why we have said that the Housing Authority will impose strict control over costs. We will commit resources with prudence and efficiency, and we will also look at ways to boost revenue and contain costs. We have looked at the previous tenant purchase scheme. We believe caution is warranted in considering any relaunch of such a scheme. There are two principles we need to pay heed to. First, we cannot sell as at cheap. And second, we need to avoid the issues arising from mixed tenure. As I said in my opening remarks, the Housing Authority has been actively safeguarding the rights of tenants of TPS estates and doing everything possible to ensure proper arrangement for management. The marking scheme has also been applied to TPS flats. Say noise issues, seven marks will be deducted. Leakage, 15 points. At 16 points, the tenant will be evicted. With the marking scheme, we will keep working on improvements to the estate management work.
we agree that we should encourage tenants with means to buy subsidized sale flats so that they can move up the housing ladder. But the more direct way to go is to sell GSH and HOS flats. Now, PRH tenants can apply as green form applicants and they can buy HOS flats. The Housing Authority also offers flats, GSH flats exclusive to green form applicants. Many members brought up home ownership for young people. Home ownership and the opportunity to get on the housing ladder are close to our heart. The Housing Bureau has been working to enrich the housing ladder to help young people move up the ladder. Apart from HOS flat, there are starter homes. We also regularize the GSH and WSM schemes to give young people more opportunities to buy subsidized sale flats. Let's look at the buyers of subsidized sale flats. People aged 40 or below make up the bulk of them. Now let's look at those who managed to buy the first-hand HOS flats. Nearly half of them are aged 40 or below, and over 80% of WSM flat buyers are aged 40 or below. Let's look at starter homes. 86% of applicants are those aged 40 or below. 85% of the buyers are aged 40 or below. The Housing Authority has also relaxed the mortgage arrangements, and this means relaxing the maximum mortgage default guarantee period and repayment period. That arrangement means more units can be bought and sold on the market. This will also let more families access mortgage. This means better chances for young families to own their homes. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority has also announced a suspension to stress test for property mortgages. We hope these policies can help young people with home ownership, and then they can move up the housing ladder and improve their lives. Some members suggest that allowing the sale of TPS flats only to the housing authority. We believe such restriction would make the TPS less attractive and make it harder for sitting tenants buying their units to move up the housing ladder. Members have also expressed concern over the waiting time for public rental housing. Mr. Dennis Leung, for example, proposed that we need to make sure certain conditions apply such as keep paying the waiting time to three years before we relaunch the TPS. Uh, given the long waiting time for PRH flats, now we don't have the conditions for relaunching the TPS. The HA will keep an eye on the overall housing supply and adjust its policies in a timely manner. We thank members for reminding us that we need to handle the private and public housing markets with care, we need to strike a balance. And this is where caution is warranted. All in all, relaunching the TPS is all about the timing. We need to examine all the factors with care, the housing ladder, the split of different kinds of housing, how we can strike a proper balance how we can avoid overlapping or competing housing ladders. The current term government is making every effort to create land and build housing. We're working to streamline procedures, step up coordination across departments. We boost speed, efficiency, quantity, and efficiency. We build faster and build more. And that's the overarching principle for our housing policy. With more HOS and GSH flats, we can meet the home aspiration, home ownership aspirations of more families. And that means those families can free up more flats for other applicants with housing needs. On the basis of the current system, the, hospital, the housing authority will continue to enhance the management of TPS estates. We will encourage more owners of TPS flats with the de dedication and capacity to take part in estate management so that we can all work together and make create a better living environment. Let's work together and create a well-organized, safe and pleasant living environment. President, I so submit. I now call upon Mr. Dennis Leung to move an amendment. President, I move my amendment. I propose the question to you that Mr. Dennis Leung's amendment be passed. Mr. Dennis Leung has claimed a division. The division bell will ring for five minutes.
開始表決。Will members please proceed to vote? Will members please check their votes? If there are no queries, voting shall now stop and the result will be displayed. Members returned by the election committee. 36 present, 5 favor, 11 against. 20 abstentions. Members returned by functional constituencies and geographical constituencies. 46 present, 12 in favor, 18 against, 15 abstentions. I think the question is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negative. Ms. Terry Lee. President, I move that in the event of further divisions being claimed in respect of the motion, or any amendments there to this council do proceed to each of such divisions immediately after the division bell has been rung for one minute. Would those in favor please raise their hands? Those against please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by majority of each of the two groups of mentioned members present. I declare the motion passed. I now propose. Ms. Chen Yut Ming, please move your amendment. President, I move my amendment. I now put the question to you that Ms. Chen Yut Ming's amendment be passed. Mr. Bill Tang has claimed a division. The division bell will ring for five minutes. The division bell will ring for one minute. Will members please proceed to vote? Members, please check their votes. If there are no queries, voting shall now stop and the result will be displayed. Members returned by the election committee. 36 present, 20 in favor, 3 against, 13 abstentions. Members returned by FC and GC. 46 present, 30 in favor, 8 against, and 7 abstentions. The question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Scott Learn, as the preceding amendment is passed, you may move your further amendment. President, I move my further amendment. I propose the question to you that Mr. Scott Learn's Further amendment be passed. Mr. Dennis Lung has claimed a division. The division bell will ring for one minute. Will members please proceed to vote? Will members please check their votes? If there are no queries, voting shall now stop and the result will be displayed. Members returned by the election committee. 36 present, 21 in favor, 3 against, 12 abstentions. Members returned by FC and GC. 46 present, 33 in favor, 8 against, and 4 abstentions. The question is 
agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Chen Hock Fung, you still have one minute and twenty seconds to reply. Then the debate will come to a close. Mr. Chen Hock Fung. President, I'm happy that we had a very serious discussion on the topic today. Whether members agree to or object to the proposal or the original motion, I think that we should all think about how we should build our property ladder. We think PRH tenants, they should move from PRH unit to HOS unit and then to private housing flats. We need to have a comprehensive property ladder in order for people to achieve that. Thank you. I now put the question to you that Mr. Chang Hock Fung's motion as amended by Mr. Dennis Learn, Ms. Chen Yu Ming, and Mr. Scott Learn be passed. Mr. Dennis Learn has claimed a division. The division bell will ring for one minute. Will members please proceed to vote? Will members please check their votes? If there are no queries, voting shall now stop and the result will be displayed. Members returned by the election committee. 36 present, 22 in favor, 3 against, 11 abstentions. Members returned by FC and GC. 46 present, 33 in favor, 8 against, and 4 abstentions. The question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion as amended passed. I now adjourn the council until 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 27th of March, 2024.